Former Irish Prime Minister Bertie Ahern, welcome very much to Sky News. How will you remember him? Well, I negotiated with him probably for 10 years and uh, he, he was a formidable negotiator. He was um, a, a tough guy, could be uncompromising on what he believed in. Uh, but the important thing was that whenever he agreed something, whenever uh, we settled on whatever the, the project was, whether it was in, on the road into the Good Friday Agreement or the many years after it, when both Tony Blair and I were um, negotiating, uh, he stuck by his word. And even though he was under horrendous pressure within his party from other unionists, uh, some of the wider public, um, he stuck to his gun. So um, I got very friendly with him over that 10 years. Obviously, he started from a position where we differed a lot, but uh, and I've remained friendly with him. So, you know, I, I great admiration for him, his wife, Daphne, who was very close to him politically and very involved with him politically, uh, and the family. I send my sympathies there to him. I mean, he was central, wasn't he, to a defining moment in Northern Ireland's recent history, being one of the principal architects of the Good Friday Agreement. I mean, can you give us a sense of what he had to overcome in order to steer his party to agree to the peace process? Well, a large part of his party um, didn't really want to be in the negotiations at all. Um, uh, then we had agreed on a, a set of, a comprehensive set of negotiations that covered um, very difficult issues for him, the release of prisoners within two years on license, um, the reform of the Royal Ulster Constabulary into a new police force, and the changing of the um, the, the laws on, on equality and criminal justice. And so it was a very um, wide scale you know, spread of leg legislative issues. Many of those were not issues that were seen by his party or by the unionist people as being a good idea. Uh, but he saw the bigger picture, and the bigger picture was that we either continued on with the violence that had gone on for 30 years, or we went on the road of peace and gave the Good Friday Agreement a chance. Of course, there were difficulties about the politics of that, but the important thing was to end the bloodshed, end the mayhem, uh, end all the, the bombings and the shootings. And um, he, he, he took that decision, and it was a brave decision. Yeah, I mean, many have went on to regard him as a traitor because of what he did. I mean, you described him as being courageous. What do you mean by that? Well, you know, when you have a sizable amount of your party uh, that are against you or when you have a sizable amount of your party that um, are, are walking out of the talks, I mean, he had key people walked out of the talks on the very day that we were doing the negotiations. Um, and then afterwards... Um, he, not from his own party alone, but from the wider unionist community, uh, they hounded him uh, so much that he ultimately lost his seat in Upper Ban um, in 2005. So, you know, he, he had to go through that period, 95 to 2005, uh, and to say that, listen, for the better good, I believe that uh, the peace process is the right thing to do, end the violence, uh, try to make as much progress as we can on the political agenda, which he did, he achieved many, many things on the political agenda. But that wasn't easy when you're getting a really, really tough and, you know, orchestrated campaign against them. And you both have shared moments of history together. What, what's been your most memorable, what's your most favourite memory of him, would you say? Well, I, I suppose, you know, when the referendum result was out, it was not at all clear what would happen in that referendum result. I suppose it was a, a risky strategy to put um, the Good Friday Agreement to the people a month after we negotiated it. Um, and when that came out, you know, 71% uh, for the agreement, that was a huge success for all of us, but it was a huge success for him because I think he had taken um, the lion's share of the abuse from, from many people. A lot of unionist people were against it. So that, that I think, was a, a huge moment of, of pleasure for him and satisfaction for him. And then to see... Uh, that in his lifetime, uh, that the uh, effectively political violence ended in the North. Thankfully, there's been very little of it in, in, in the last 25 years. Yes, I know one former member of the Ulster Unionist Party has been talking to you, uh, our Ireland correspondent David Blevins, saying that, that his actions mean that there are people who are alive today that would have died if not for his work in the peace process. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. I mean, we were losing um, at least 100 people a year or so. Uh, and that was a constant. Uh, so if you if you were to follow that, suddenly you're talking about a few thousand people, uh, not to mind that 
the huge amount of people that would have been injured and named and you know the devastation to property and you know to family life and all of the other things and uh, now we're in a situation in northern ireland or yes there are political arguments and differences and problems with the institutions but that violence that we sought to stop uh, and the he played such an instrumental part in that has succeeded uh, became becoming the first minister jointly being awarded the nobel peace prize back in 1998 what is his legacy would you see say bertie Hearn? i think he, he you know he, he, he got that Peace Prize with John Hume uh, and, you know, went to the, ultimately the House of Lords and, you know, got a lot of other kudos as well. But I think the, the reason is, if you're to put it down into a sentence, that he had the opportunity um, in the position he was as leader of the Ulster Unionist Party to take the road of peace and give political, um, political process an opportunity to, to strive and to survive or to, to allow, to stand back, walk away from the talks and allow the, um, the violence to continue. And he, he would, even in spite of all the opposition, he, he took, in my mind, the right road, but I think the right road for the people in Northern Ireland, that of peace. And that was a brave and courageous move. Uh, and I think that is his legacy. And Northern Ireland Assembly recall has been postponed today as a mark of respect for his passing. I mean, what do you think he would want to happen about the ongoing power-sharing impasse that, that's currently blighting the Assembly? Well, he was very much against uh, the, the... He was for Brexit, uh, against the protocol, so... Um, but he, he, he certainly was for political progress, so I think he would like to see that the institutions uh, would be back up and running and that we would find a solution, a negotiated solution to the protocol. Uh, he was a good negotiator, so... Um, these things have to be resolved uh, and, you know, ho hopefully with a bit of sense on all sides, we, we can see the protocol issue resolved between the United Kingdom and the EU uh, and then we'd be able to get on with life in Northern Ireland in, in, in the way that we all want to see that happen.